Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we will begin by bringing in all these Pipers to their destinations. Uh, maybe be between the first two and these we'll do something else because I have a boilerplate of a moon mission uh, ready and building here so that'll be in 25 days. I put together sort of a possible station something that could possibly fulfill the contract but I'd rather wait until proper station modules but i suppose i'll show you that uh, just for laughs uh, it, it's pretty expensive though it would be our most expensive launch to date in fact you can only see one gemini capsule but the trick is there's another one and yellow tanks because uh, i use this whack corporal uh, texture. I need to add all the other textures. I'm only going with the default procedural parts texture pack right now, so not too much going on there. But this is all food, water, and oxygen, which is obscene. Um, it shouldn't take that much space, but uh, well, whatever. Uh, they can definitely c crawl through. It's only got 50% utilization after all. That's definitely enough to crawl through. And uh, so we have two Gemini cabins for four total crew, which is what was required. And uh, it just needed that and docking ports, and that's it. So not much as far as the details, but of course, with two Gemini cabins, uh, we have to have a lot of power. And they take two kilowatts apiece, so that's four kilowatts. Each of these delivers 400 watts, and we have eight of them, so that's 3.2 kilowatts, so that's not enough and definitely not enough to charge back after the nighttime side. We would want to put this in a pretty high orbit too, to uh, maximize the amount of time in daylight. But um, so we have Hydrolox uh, fuel cells. So we've got a fuel cell, at, uh, we've got some of the fuel at the top, some of the fuel at the bottom here, and a total of four fuel cells, just in case. And yeah. Uh, antennae, of course, and then this is the Arizina 204 for the thrusters. So that is the arrangement, but it's not great. And I would rather have a station module that doesn't take a total of four kilowatts. So we can wait for the technology to uh, not to unlock. We haven't queued up the technology because we don't have enough science. What we really need to do is wait for the probes to arrive at Venus and Mars so that we can get the science so that we can unlock the station technology and we don't have to launch this. I mean, it's pretty expensive, 36,000, and um, if we take a look at uh, the rollout cost, 200,000. And of course, this takes the largest pad, that's a given. Um, I've sort of reworked the Motron, which you saw in the previous episode. It's still six of the RD-253s, but the center line now has um, balloon tanks instead, the Tank 3 balloons. And uh, that required me to tool a 3.05 meter version of that tank. I only had the 2 meter pre previously. But 3.05 is good because that's the diameter of Centaur. So it's actually 10 feet. That's why it's 3.05. But uh, yeah, and you can see it matches the Titan stages because those are also 3.05. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, but this is a backup idea. It's possible that to make that backup idea work, I'm actually going to have to attach a subsequent module to that to add more power uh, to it. I don't know if it's powerful enough on its own, or at least um, extra fuel for the fuel cells. It's got 30 days worth of fuel for two fuel cells right now, but not all four. And each fuel cell delivers 0.75 kilowatts. And so three kilowatts altogether if all four are running. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's still enough to replenish after the nighttime side. So all together, including the solar panels, everything running at 6.2 kilowatts. So that doesn't seem quite enough for, for a 4 kilowatt draw and then the nighttime side. Okay. Well, anyway, that's the shape of things. Let's go over to this Piper 2 in 16 days and see what's up. Okay, so this is an atmospheric probe mission. And so we need to enter Mars's atmosphere below 50 kilometers and transmit science data from Mars's atmosphere after going below 50 kilometers. Now let's see how we're approaching Mars, whether we are likely to have communication. It's rough. Um, right now we're high, but 
this is one of those times where maybe I need to use flight computer to delay the but I didn't actually did I action group the science let's see yes I did action group one and we might as well transmit this stuff now <laughs> Uh, we haven't done it here, okay, in the middle of interplanetary space. But let's see if I know how to do this. So let's say, okay, well, let me transmit this first. So let's say I type 120 in here. Okay, and then I press 1. Okay, so then uh, it will do action group 1 after 10 minutes. And let's see that that works. Well, all right, we will use Light Computer for the first time for this purpose because I am worried that we're not going to be in communication at that point. But Mars has a rotation period of 24 hours, so eventually it'll get into daylight. I don't know whether I can deploy... I mean, the solar panels... Um, yeah, I don't know if they're on an action group. No, no, that's all right, no. Um, yes, they are. Okay, so we can retract them and extend them once we get to the surface. That's fine. Okay, so we can do the science at the right time and then extend the solar panels. Well, it's looking good. Got to arm the parachutes. We know they work, this sort of probe has failed numerous times and uh, has descended safely to Earth's surface a couple of times. These thrusters are a little bit underwhelming, to be honest. It's trying to fool us, uh, saying that the communication is that ways, which would allow us to keep communication, but it's actually going that a ways. I don't know, I mean, what if uh, it takes us a lot longer to get to periapsis than that 10 minutes because we're slowing down? I don't think it should. We, we extend the solar panels again. But now I don't want any delay in what I'm doing, so... Because I'm going to retract the solar panels soon. I guess right now I should get some science too. Okay, retracting solar panels and those antennae. It occurs to me that we could probably have carried more powerful thrusters and less fuel. <laughs> we need to get below 50 kilometers in altitude before that happens, before the science is read. It's going to be close. But we're still connected, so I could probably put a manual one in. In case... Uh, it looks it's like it's going to be okay. What did we just lose? Oh god, we lost the antenna. Why? Why did we lose the antenna? Gosh darn it. Uh, I saw we lost something else. But that's one reason why, why we have the communitrons. Hopefully, once one of our other orbiters comes in, we can communicate with it. And send the signal back. We'll see. Well, we're definitely below 50 kilometers here. Oh, it said okay. Um, we didn't actually get any science back contract. Uh, we have, uh, well, we can't, we'll, we'll just keep those. We can't transmit. In fact, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't know how to keep them. Anyway, let's not fiddle around with that. It says transmit science data from Venus atmosphere after going below 110. And I know that the Mars contract said that the same about 50 kilometers. Well, it's not my fault if the contract's messed up. We'll still try and do it properly. 
just as vindication, but the whole antenna blowing up thing is not nice. Let's see if the parachutes can hold it. And if, broadly speaking, the delay for popping out the solar panels and the communitrons will work. And partly, I mean, I shouldn't fiddle around with Smart ASS because we have no connection. But it's alright for it to continue puffing because we want to get rid of the fuel anyway. It'll make it lighter on touchdown. Okay, we have drogues out. And full deployment brings us to... Um, 11 meters per second, so pretty fast still. I get the feeling that when I configured the chutes, I configured it for an empty one of these tanks. Uh, not that tank, the ones, the Arizona N204 tank. Oh, 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 it's actually tumbling. We've got a slope. I think the parachutes are trying to help us. I shouldn't have switched Smart ASS off, but it's okay, I guess. We really want to get to the bottom of the hill before the antennae deploy, of course, and the uh, solar panels. That is critical, so that we don't break all of them off. I sort of blame the parachute. Maybe, maybe it's because the parachute is sticking around that it has this weird behavior. I don't know. I can't help but feel this is not how it would happen in real life. Is this a glitch for which I could take desperate action like adding extra gravity? Or am I going to see my solar panels get destroyed? I think this is not how things happen. <laughs> okay, so at the risk of cheating. I don't think that helps at all. No, that's not, nothing helps. Okay, well. Here it goes, extending all the things. That's not actually extending the solar panels. Just the antennae. Oh! I, I'm pretty sure that that action group extended the solar panels too. So that's a bit dubious. Oh, they're all broken, is it? Yeah, they're broken. Ah, uh, shucks. Well, fortunately it doesn't pay attention to electric charge on a probe when we're not paying attention to it. Maybe we'll go with that. That's cheats too. But one cheat didn't work. <laughs> one cheat didn't work, so anyway, we did not get an opportunity to cheat. We will see if we can do the conveniently ignoring electric charge depletion cheat. But anyway, back to, uh, no, actually let's go to uh, another probe arriving and maybe it can help out. Technically this would deplete of electric charge before that one actually arrives. But I'm curious to see whether the communication can work out even though the main dish on that lander one got destroyed. So this is just an orbiter. And it may be able to help, but it doesn't have commutrons on. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't put commutrons on these, but I didn't. For reasons I don't understand, the delta V is going up on that. The closest approach distance is changing too. How is that possible? when Mars is our target and we have no RCS on. Oh, uh, uh, high gravity is, no? High gravity is off. Oh, this is all bad. Um, yes, something's wrong. I'm gonna restart the game. 
Okay, well, restoration was successful. Let that be a lesson to us. We shouldn't even talk about cheating, darn it. And uh, right now, though, the electric charge is not ideal, but that's because it's not oriented properly. So let's let's fix that first. Okay, that's the end of that fuel. What are the parameters we need? Uh, periapsis below 6,751, so no problem there. Um, we can keep it to this. We want it to be a communication sort of probe. I just wanted to get the periapsis close to get the Oberth effects stuff. Good old Oberth. How much is it taking to get into orbit like that? Okay, it seems doable. We could even lift the periapsis up later. I would like to get within um, the orbit of Phobos. That's nice. And then we can lift the periapsis up after that with the remaining fuel. I don't think there's any reason to keep a tight orbit. Let's do some science. Is that not action grouped? That's not action grouped on this one. Th these are much worse than the than the lander probes in many ways. Okay, well, there's not much science to do out here anyway. Okay, let's go to periapsis. But we do have to double check how communication is going to be. Honestly, communication was pretty good until the main antenna broke off on the lander probe, so it's possible that we'll be okay. But we should probably start the retroburn earlier. Taking a very careful look at that communication line. This is going to be a long burn after all. Let's see. 10 minutes for the whole stage, and we're going to do the better part of that 10 minutes. I think even if we lost communication and expended the stage, we wouldn't be in a crash course. We'd just be in a horribly tight orbit. We'll probably end up expending this and ending up in that low orbit. Well, while we're here, uh, let me see about that science. Okay, that's new. That's new. Olympus Mons. Well, we have lost connection, so we're going to expend this stage. I could try shutting it down, but it's probably cheaty. Okay, well, let me shut down. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, I mean, why? I don't even know why it lets me shut down the engine. Honestly. This, this, I feel like there's so many cheats going on right now. I'll, I'll, I'll bite. Well, okay, it's got a point at nodes, so it's actually not going to bring the orbit all the way down. If I let it go and I assume that I didn't touch anything because there's no connection, um, it's actually going to keep flipping around and stay at this level. We'll hope that, uh, Trying to do it legitimately will yield better karma later on. This got to be a spinning sort of thing. Oh no, don't bring the periapsis down though. Okay, it has expended the fuel. It is in a safe position. Let's see. The question is whether or not it's going to facilitate communication with the ground probe, which was right there actually. But uh, it can't facilitate communication when the ground probe uh, on that side because it doesn't have communication. Okay, now it is. All right, well, let's do the thing. Okay, well, um, let's see where are the instruments that have stored info. Review stored data. Okay, transmit data. 
Okay, and we can get more signs from the surface, I believe. Yeah. Highlands of Mars. Okay, I think we're done here, or uh, did I miss the analyzed telemetry? I missed the analyzed telemetry. Okay. The last thing. Alright, we are done with this. We have situated our probe in orbit. I believe we should have fulfilled that contract. Indeed, I don't see the Mars orbit contract anymore. So, all our Mars things are done, but probably these two are still Mars things. I think these over here are the Venus ones. Nope, that's also Mars. The Venus ones are mixed up in there somewhere. Anyway, right now we're going to turn to our Hammond boilerplate for our future lunar mission. Okay, but before we actually do the Hammond launch, we should go with space station prototypes for our new technology. We do have some extra tech left over, but maybe I should hang on to that before uh, until I figure out exactly what I need. I'm pretty satisfied with the technology we've got so far, as far as the major contracts, the station contract and the lunar landing contract that we need to do. Though uh, maybe these upgrades, especially that procedural avionics upper stage upgrade might be worthwhile. Surveyor core is nice. Hmm. Okay, I think mature avionics and probes probably will do good things for us later on. And I don't know, I'm not hot on these new dishes. The thing is, uh, with the way it's, no, it does, these do require the previous one in the line. We'll see. Okay, here we have the Hammond boilerplate spacecraft on a Motron rocket, but I'm confused because the electric charge ought to be replenishing right now, and it is not. And it's not depleting either. Why, when the fuel pumps are on, is it not replenishing? This is strange. Um, <laughs> yet again, I, I check this. Okay, well, what if I do infinite electricity? Well, I don't know what's going on, but it should be recharging. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, let it do that and then see what happens. So, apparently some of the fairings have the shader issue and others do not. Uh, Miko on Twitch mentioned that to me, so I'll try and use the better fairings from now on, but of course these have been tooled now. Okay, I'm turning it off, and then the electric charge just goes away. It just disappears. Do you see? It disappeared instantaneously. Uh, okay. Let me leave it out on the pad, and I'll come back to it. Uh, nope, going away and coming back has not helped. So, let's take a look at the craft in the VAB to see if we can figure out what is going on with this massive depletion of electric charge down to 36.12 for some reason. Okay, so here's the culprit. And, of course, we have solar panels uh, that we would extend at the right time. As far as what consumes power, um, there is... That's just another tank. Uh, there's the avi this, this whole thing is an avionics unit, but it only consumes, well, 0.95 kilowatts. But, again, the launch clamp should be able to deal with that. The question is... Is there something preventing them from cross-feeding, I suppose? But they're attached directly to this, so there's no cross-feed thing, there's no clamp or anything in between. Is it because of... But, I mean, then every capsule would drain completely of electric charge if the heat shield like completely blocked the launch clamps from replenishing the electric charge. We've got six launch stability enhancers, all supposed to provide power. Uh, 
So I don't know what you guys think of this, but seems like the game is cheating me again. It might be because we have just the sheer amount of these things. Is that right? But then why? Huh. And then uh, if I turn off one fuel pump, it uh, gets 30 because that's what they can do. These all have probe cores inside. Let me take a look at how much power that draws. Maybe that's why. It might not be that the game is trying to cheat me. I may have made a fundamental error in picking these tanks. So, um, Titan 2 slash 3 slash 4 tank. Uh, this one. Yeah, each of those tanks can uh, control a vessel 1,000 ton. Whoa. Oh, yeah, 1,000 tons. No, it doesn't actually say that it has any power draw, which is weird all on its own. Hmm. Avionics without any power draw? Maybe that alone confuses the whole thing. They also don't have any internal power for that matter. It occurs to me that probably the FASA parts are not properly configured. <laughs> um, there's a Titan 3 series fuel tank here. That doesn't have any avionics or anything. And then all of these Titan 1 series upper stage fuel tank do have avionics here. But they don't have any power draw stated either. So no, they're not supposed to be drawing power. Our, because of all these parts having avionics though, our avionics is great. <laughs> I mean, we have avionics for days, but yeah, I mean, they're not supposed to be drawing any power. So yeah, it is cheating me somehow. I mean, of course that was, eh, it's all, it's all a mess. It's all a mess. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try turning on infinite electricity during the launch and then once we're in orbit and deploy the solar panels I'll turn it off. I don't know what else to do. I can't figure out why it should be drawing so much electricity. The launch clamps, I, I don't know if they say how much they provide. They provide one kilowatt. Hmm. So that's six kilowatts down there. Let's see. Let, let's just sort of tally up. Obviously I just checked all these parts and they say they don't have a power draw. So they're not the culprit. Okay, well, I hope this is not too traumatizing. Here I go. Infinite electricity. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. That's a heck of a delay. Launch. I mean, this is just a test. There is no mission to fill with this. And I guess it's good that we tested it out, because there's obviously a problem. Okay, we have lost one engine. No need to panic, though. Yet. Check it out of time. I'm gonna get the opposite number ready just in case something else fails. We can help balance it out by shutting this one off immediately. It's important to get the right one to shut off. I made a mistake not preparing that the previous time. Alright, well, the rest of them worked. Separation. Separation. And ignition. Well, we certainly have enough to get to orbit with this payload. That's important. Okay, we are in orbit. And the stage provided the Delta V it needed. So, separation. Separation. RCS forward. RCS seems to be properly configured. Though sort of blowing at those tanks, so that's not great. All right, well, let's see, moment of truth. Let's deploy all the solar panels and then see 
what happens when I turn off infinite electricity. Turning off infinite, well, nope, zap. Electric charge is gone immediately. So it's not the rocket, it's not those tanks. It's something here. Here, let me infinite electricity it for the time being so that we can examine the situation. This says 950 watts used, that's fine. Um, we can, I, I mean, obviously the, no matter what, the electric charge shouldn't just disappear that quickly. That is obviously wrong. Um, it should gradually go away, that's fine. You know, that means that we didn't pack enough power, quite understandable. So part-wise, we have the RD-58 there, those tanks, fairly simple, we used them before, the balloon tanks we've used before, and avionics unit taking 256 watts, very normal. Uh, tiny little tanks, those are normal too, we've used them on the nose of the spacecraft, a decoupler, uh, we've got the landing legs, we've got another tank here, we've got another avionics unit, oh! I think I see the problem. This avionics unit is using infin infinity watts. Hmm. I don't suppose. Why? Why does this toggle power thing never work? By the way, <laughs> if ever there was a time to have toggle power work, this would be the time. But it never works. Shut down avionics. Oh my God! Look. Well, at least it's not infinite anymore. Um, that's a big number. That's a big number. I feel like I should like end here because this is like the ultimate right now. I mean, how does this happen? Somebody divide by, but it's not just divided by zero because it started out with infinity and then in the power down mode, in the power down mode, it has an actual number. Yep, infinity, an actual number. Hmm. Hmm. I think I should restart the game. Okay, nope. Uh, restarting did not help. And mind you, the infinity watts. And uh, not enough electric charge, zero out of... There might be a number there. It might not really be infinity, and it's just lying to me, but... Um, in the VAB, it definitely gave us a proper consumption rate there. That was not what it... So I'm just going to proceed with this and declare this a, a bug. This is a bug. And we will uh, just transfer to the moon and see what we can do there with this. That was part of the test. So as it is, this stage does not have enough to complete the transfer over to the moon. This should be the RD-58. Oh no, it's the 11D-33M. I think I need that to be the RD-58 for it to actually make the long burn. Hmm. So I don't know if this is actually going to be able to finish this burn or not. Well, it is past its rated burn time and that meantime before failure is headed down really quickly. Well, I had a minor problem. Just a loss of thrust, not even a loss of specific impulse. Okay. And, oh, we have no connection. Oops. Uh, huh. I probably had antennae that I was supposed to activate. Right, obviously. Mm, that'll be fine. I'm sure. I'm sure we figured. There we go. And now activate those commutron, commutrons, please. And still very impressive work from that stage. This is still the one with the infinite core. The infinity core, so sort of like the infinity gauntlet or something. Okay, 
Well, in a very weird fashion, we're headed off to the moon. We should reacquire just past periapsis there. We've got a weird orbit though. So yes, we are using eight 2 kilonewton thrusters as our landing engines, potentially. I mean, this is obviously a lander stage with the landing legs and everything. We're wasting fuel here, but I deliberately want to empty this tank to see if what we've got up there is enough to push it all back home. Okay, let's say we add some residual on this stage that we would be able to use. So that should be right there. Let's get rid of the nose, uh, the docking port. Off it goes. And now, how much do we have? Well, it was still reporting the right amount. Okay, uh, let's plot for the return. So we can't really dump this right now because we need the solar panels to power it. Oh shoot, the upper ones are firing too. That would not be a good idea. Nope, stop that. So that's a minor staging malfunction. Okay, nope, this does not look like it's gonna work. Uh, it was not telling me to Delta V based on having that module with us. It was telling me to Delta V assuming I dumped that module. Well, I don't think uh, there was anything else I really... Well, maybe the but the parachutes we've tested before. I think the, um, the heat shield at this level we've tested before. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a disappointment. So I'll have to keep that in consideration and figure out some other way of powering this. Maybe on the trip back we should just use the fuel cell. Use a fuel cell. We don't have a fuel cell on right now, I don't think. This is still fuel... Um, that tank is still fuel. Okay, yeah, we might need a fuel cell up here to deal with the trip back. That might be the best way to go. I'll think about that, but yeah, there's been way too much nonsense in this <laughs> in this episode. So I think I'll wrap it up here, and we'll proceed with uh, hopefully even more successful things in the next episode. I mean, it was pretty successful. We did uh, fulfill the two Mars contracts, and next time we'll look to fulfill the two Venus contracts. And yeah, maybe launch another version of this that's quite a bit different. Uh, hopefully without a problematic core that uses infinite electricity. Speaking of which, let me just turn that off right now. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.